F12 again to close it and you don't have to use your mouse. Look at that. So you can probably see the hint that one of the goals for me this year is to use my mouse less. So hopefully I can get a few of you on the journey with me if you're not on that wagon. and welcome to Holistic Developer channel. I'm Anna, the host of this channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm super happy to have you here. In today's video, I want to share with you 10 tips and tricks that will help you be more efficient and more productive using the browser, using Chrome. So if that is something that you're interested in, if you're interested to be more efficient and productive with your time, this is the video to watch. So the very first Chrome shortcut tip that I want to share with you is that I'm sure a lot of you already know the shortcut of how to open a new browser tab while you are on Google Chrome. It's Control N. But did you know that there's also a shortcut to do that in incognito mode, in the mode where you won't be <laughs> tracked and you'll be private and that shortcut for you is control shift n next google chrome tip that i want to share with you is imagine that you just got a ticket and that ticket requires you to do a lot of googling so you have a lot of stack overflows open pages you have some forums open you maybe have some reddit pages open and you have a whole bunch of tabs opened and you have to go and click on them and like close one of one at a time well there is a better way of doing that you can simply use Control w on your windows machine and that will close your current window that you're no longer are using. And the next tip, it's kind of tied to this tip, but imagine that you, by mistake, you just closed the tab. It was something that was important to you and by mistake you closed it. And there's a shortcut for that as well. So this Google Chrome shortcut will be something that I'm sure you will appreciate and that is Control Shift T. So when you are using Control Shift T on your Google Chrome tab, that will open the previously closed Chrome tab. So um, yeah, that's something that I found useful recently because by mistake I close a lot of times the tabs that I'm actually using. Along that, those lines, uh, you are, let's say, in the case where, again, you have a lot of tabs, but in this case, you need all of them. You cleaned up, you closed the ones that you don't need, you open all of the ones that you need, but the information is spread across multiple tabs. And yeah, normally you can use your mouse to click on the tabs that you want, but there's a better way of doing that. You get the, the hint, right? <laughs> Everything is a better way of doing something. And um, let's just save a little bit of battery on your mouse and instead use the shortcut. And the shortcut is control and page up or page down to toggle the next tab in the line. So if you do control page up, we'll go into the next tab that you have open or control page down, we'll go to the previous tab. So. That way you can more efficiently go through the tab. The next tip I'm sure will be also appreciated by many people. If you are like me and you download a lot of stuff and then you try to remember where that was downloaded, try to find where it was downloaded. Um, I recently discovered this shortcut that made me more efficient and that is control J. Okay. The next tips, the next Google Chrome tips are really good. So you are, <laughs> I at least, oh, I was really amazed by this once. So I have to give credit where it's due. A couple of days ago, I learned this new shortcut or this tip that actually will save me a lot of time. Um, during the meetings, my manager and I would talk about something and we at work, we used Jira, we used Confluence and a lot of times we talk about something, we remember that there's something on Confluence or there's something in Jira that we need to find. And obviously you have to go and find that. Um, so what 
I realized my manager has certain, I don't know, something in his search bar that immediately jumps to Jira or immediately jumps to Confluence. And it's like, how is that possible? And I thought that's an extension. I went in onto the wild goose chase of finding the extension for that and I could not find anything like that. So I asked my manager, like, what is that? I tried to find it, I can't find it. And he told me that that is a search engine shortcut that you can do. And guess what? I did exactly that. So imagine that you have a tool that you constantly use or something, a resource that you constantly use and you want to search that. And you can do that with a lot of things. You can do that with, with Amazon, you can do that whatever, Facebook, what you want to do, right? But let's take something, an example that we can apply to our situation like like we are developers. A lot of us probably spend a lot of time on GitHub. Maybe we research something, search something there. So if you find yourself in a scenario where you a lot of times use the search bar in GitHub, here's this tip for you. In your Chrome settings, find the search engines, select add, and in your select add, fill the following fields. You specify which what is the search engine, you specify your shortcut, your, your key that you will be using, and you enter the query. And at the end of the query, you specify percent %s, which will mean that whatever text you enter in your search bar, that will be filled in there. And how do you get the query, you might ask? That's a good question. So uh, a lot of times, I don't know what is the query that the site is using. And the best way to figure that out, let's say we will go to GitHub, we select uh, the search field, and then there we type something. When you do enter, in the search bar, you see the query. So you copy everything up to the word that you search for, copy that, and put it in the settings for the search engine, save, and the next time when you want to use this, open your tab, whatever key, short key you used, I use J, so you enter J, space, and what you type after that, that will be the term that will be used to search on Jira or GitHub or Confluence or whatever other resource you want to search on. On this topic as well, the next tip is like you are searching something, let's say you are on Jira, right? And you have a lot of stuff, a lot of issues and stuff like that. And suddenly you want to go somewhere else. And the simplest thing you can do is do control L and that will jump right into the search bar and you can change the URL as you need. Let's say if you want to go to the next Jira item or something like that, you update the ID there, or you can enter a completely different URL and navigate there. So that's a useful tip for me that saves me time. Over a year, I'm sure it will shave a few hours <laughs> in a day because I, I use a lot of searching these days and researching and so on. Let's talk about the next tip. I'm sure the majority of you already know if you're a seasoned software engineer, you probably use this on a regular basis and it's probably muscle memory for you right now. But maybe and probably in the audience, we have people who are just embarking on the journey of learning web development, people who want to learn and they don't know this. And if you are using Google Chrome developer tools, you know that usually you right click, select the inspect option and you get the developer tools showing up on your page. But you guessed it, there's a better way. You can do that without using your mouse. You can do that by clicking F12 on your keyboard and that will open the developer tools. And if you click F12 again, it will close it as simple as that. And finally, the last tip that I wanted to share with you, it's something that is not exactly tied to browser <laughs> efficiency or anything like that, but it's something that definitely helps. So 
let's say you are browsing for work, you do stuff, like you're searching on a specific issue something, right? And you have a whole bunch of items opened in your in your browser, you have a lot of tabs and you don't want to close them. And they are particular for one issue that you're working on. And then you have to stop on that and probably you go on break for lunch or something like that and you have to research them for personal reasons or it's a different issue that you have to research and you don't want to combine all the tabs together in the same mess in the same place. The answer for that is basically to have a virtual desktop. And that's a function that it currently exists on Windows and it exists on Mac as well. To create a Windows virtual desktop, you use a Windows key, a control and ID, and that will create you a new virtual desktop. And in this virtual desktop, you again can have a browser with multiple tabs, you research of other issue, and uh, voila, you can separate your concerns based on tasks, based on work, life, um, fun, or whatever you want. And you might ask, but well, where are my this virtual desktop? The simplest way to see all of them, you just basically do a Windows tab and it will open all the virtual desktops that you have created. And you can name every single one of them. You can name first one, Jira issue XYZ. The next app can be a Jira Epic XYZ. Um, the next one might be personal or surprise, whatever you want, whatever fits your boat, right? And yeah, that is something that I find useful to separate the tasks that I do and keep them organized. And for whatever reason, I'm able to go through the things that I have to do because I have a lot of different responsibilities and keep them on different buckets and different shelves uh, keeps, helps me make progress on all of them. And I didn't share with you how actually can you go through them uh, without actually going into the of in the mode of viewing all of them. And the shortcut for that is basically you do Windows control, left arrow or right arrow, and that will <laughs> scroll through your virtual windows. And if you want to close them, you just go into the view where you have all the virtual tabs open and you click the X button and your vir virtual desktop is closed and clean and done and you have no worry about that again. As you can see, I shared quite a few tips with you and hopefully those tips are something that will encourage you to get more efficient with your time and help you save some energy and batteries on your mouse. So if you want to embark on the journey with me of saving some energy on my mouse, please welcome. And I'm curious which shortcuts and best practices you have to make your browsing experience more streamlined and more efficient, please share them with me. I'm always looking for ways to improve and make my work as easy as possible and save whatever time I can, seconds, milliseconds, minutes. When I look at over a year, it's considerable. So yeah, please drop them in the comments below and I'm looking forward to see your suggestions and recommendations. And if you found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody who might benefit from it. Maybe somebody's really, really heavily using that mouse and the mouse needs a break. So if you want to save that mouse, please share with its owner this video uh, and see you in the next video. And oh yeah, obviously, if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't have to remind you that if you want to get notified about the next videos that will be uploaded, you have to be subscribed and the notification bell has to be on, otherwise you will miss it. So yeah, happy, happy times. See you next time.